Good morning children I hope you have seen the previous video where I have discussed about the presidential form of government right and in the presidential form of government what happened right there was an incompatibility of membership of the executive and the legislature right this I am going to explain in the in the coming videos clear everyone so let's start now okay so the relationship between the legislature and the executive the way we did in the parliamentary form of government in the previous video where I have you know explained about the relationship between the legislature and the executive and the relationship is what there is a good bonding between the legislature and the executives right these two organs why because the members are the part of the parliament and they have to work in coordination and plus the very best part is that cabinet ministers you know cabinet ministers their head under, under it you know cabinet ministers and cabinet ministers head is the prime minister and they both both have to work in coordination the parliament as there is opposition party to attack them so the real power if you see enjoys by the cabinet minister with his head as pm under the parliamentary form of government so here we have the relationship of legislatures and executives under presidential form of government so what kind of relationship they are enjoying let's start now see there is the incompatibility of membership of the executive and legislature neither any member of the legislature can become a member of the executive nor any member of the letter can participate in the working of the former that means ni neither they won't you know interfere in each other's work be it executives or legislature now what happened non responsibility to executive towards the legislature the executive is not directly responsible to the legislature that means the members are not directly responsible to the parliament it remain independent of the legislative interference it is not directly answerable to the parliament but still you know the legislature can appoint the investigating committee to investigate the working of the executive's department the health of the administrations and its policies and it exercises some indirect control all over its executives with the help of various motions clear everyone now come on to stable and fixed tenures what is it now in this model neither the legislature can secure the removal of executive in an all easy way nor dot if you say the executives can dissolve the legislature these two organs have definite and fixed term stability of tenures of the executives in the legislature is a major feature of their relationship clear everyone so they have a fixed tenure and they are not even feel insecure about their tenure right and if you want to remove the president i already explained you you have to you know perform the impeachment process and that is really very difficult clear and if you see the great merit of presidential model of relationship is that the executive concentrate upon its work as in an efficient strong and stable manner it remain largely free from both legislative interference in administration and aggressive party politics the legislature is also in a position to carry out its work independently and yet it maintain some control over the executive in an indirect way however its key demerit is the possibility of deadlock between these two organs of the government the administration can suffer due to the dependence of the executive upon the you know if you see upon the legislature for securing necessary laws and finances needed for running the administration now the legislature too finds problematic to assess the laws which are needed by the executive clear everyone now i hope so people have understood the relationship between the president between the executives and the legislatures clear everyone let's move to another slide now now we i'm going to explain you about the merit and demerit of presidential form just the way we did in parliamentary form so the merit is the it is a stable government in which the tenure of the executives and legislatures are fixed you know it is the best thing ever we have in this form of government then it is a strong government because of the fact that the executive is independent of day to day day to day interference by the legislatures clear again a merit now third one there is a continuity in governmental policies because because the tenure of the executive is definite and fixed right they can very easily manage their policies clear then ministers are experts now, under presidential government is a government by professionals and experts because the cabinet is constituted by the president on merit clear a merit basis they are they are getting they are giving the appointment just not like the way in parliamentary system government some incompetent ministers also to can get elected through elections clear everyone now executives now in a presidential system the political parties enjoy a minimum role in the sphere of executive function it keeps contain the party politics to the legislative sphere clear everyone they are not you know enjoying or they are not interfering in any party politics clear? now what happened more useful for the unity of nation because of being a strong executives presidential system is held to be more conducive to the preservation of unity integrity here the unity integrity can be very easily maintained just like the way in the parliamentary form of government clear everyone now come on to demerits now a single person now what happens success of presidential government depend upon the quality of the single person who becomes the president clear now maybe it can enjoy a very powerful position become dominant right now what happens the president can behave arbitrarily because he wields a large amount of power both in head of the state as well as the head of the government clear maybe president can you know take advantage of his power then presidential executive is not responsible to the legislature then because of 
separation of power there can be frequent deadlock between the legislative and executive bodies right and this way it results into inefficiency then after that fixed tenure make the executive rigid and responsible in approach right then after that presidential government is not free from evil of party part system part politics you know political parties are in a position to use the parliament for exercising a control over the members clear everyone so i hope so you we will have understood the merits and the demerits clear let's come on to next slide now now we have parliamentary government in united kingdom now first of all i'm going to explain you about the united kingdom and united kingdom you know it's parliamentary government its constitution how they are enjoying how they are running their government so the main feature is westminster model british parliamentary government or the cabinet system of go uh, of britain is also known by the term the westminster model the westminster is a seat of the british parliament this name has been given to the parliamentary system because the cabinet is constituted by the members of the majority party in the parliament clear everyone or known as house of commons it is also called the responsible system of government and on this basis our indian government is following right that's why india is following the parliamentary form of government then next if you see british monarch in britain the monarch is the nominal and constitutional executive all the power exercise in the name of the king but not by the king himself the real executive power in the hands of the crown of which the cabinet is the dominant power in fact british cabinet is a custodian user of real executive power the cabinet formulate all policies get these policies approved by the parliament and then implement these and run the administration now next the structural organization of the british council of minister that the ministry is of the nature of wheels within a wheel the innermost wheel if you see the real wheel of power is office of british pm next to it an informal wheel consisting of such ministers enjoy the full confidence of the pm right it is called the inner cabinet or kitchen cabinet the next wheel consists of 15 to 20 ministers right who hold key portfolio and together participate in the policy making and decision making under the leadership of the pm this wheel is a cabinet it is a most powerful part of the ministry clear the next wheel consists of the ministers who are either in charge of small departments or are dis or are de you know deputies to the cabinet ministers clear fine so, and the outermost wheel consists of the members of the majority party whose confidence and support sustains the ministry in power so basically like this wheel is being followed in our country in india right like the way council of ministers council of ministers they have you know they are being categorized into three part first the very first part cabinet second part minister of state and the third part is deputy minister like in the same way these ministers are being categorized right in the form of wheel in the british parliamentary system clear everyone now where they have a close relationship now there is no separation of power in britain all ministers are essentially you know members of either of the two houses of the british parliament the P the pm always belong to the house of commons all other ministers must also be a member of either the house of commons or the house of lords in case a person who is not a member of the parliament is made a minister he is to become a member of either house within a fixed period in case he fails to fulfill this condition he has to resign from his ministership the minister beside being heads of government department continue to be active you know and full members of the respective houses in fact their role in the parliament gets invigorated they participate in the deliberation in both the houses but can exercise their vote only in the house of which they are a member most of the bills are introduced and piloted by the ministers the whole of the parliamentary works take the form of interactions between the ministry backed by majority party and the opposition so in the house two ministries like majority party and the opposition just like the way we have indian parliamentary system clear now next ministerial responsibility now what form ministerial responsibility takes place in british parliament individual collective responsibility of the ministers towards the british parliament how come they are doing that now it has three part responsibility of the minister towards the king now what happened now how come they are you know showing the responsibility the responsibility of the minister towards the monarch if you see then how we perform now one one accepted principle of the british constitution is all acts of the king are in reality the acts of the ministers these are how we perform in the name of the king the king always acts upon the advice of his minister and that is why the concerned minister and the, not the king is responsible for every act the ministers are responsible for all the actions of the kings right the next is right next minister responsibility is the individual responsibility of each minister each minister is individually responsible for his conduct as well as for the activity of the department under his charge for this he is an answerable to the parliament in practice to the house of commons if anything goes wrong he is answerable to the house of commons and in the in case the house of commons rejects his explanation or passes a censure motion against him he has to resign up for right and if the house passes a cut motion in respect of his salary or the finances of his department it is also taken as a vote of no confidence and he has to resign clear everyone so i hope so people have understood 
clear now next collective responsibility now what happened collective responsibility you know what happened is the backbone and a most distinct, distinctive feature of the british parliamentary system for all its poli policies and decision the whole ministry is responsible before the parliament in fact the british house of commons it is the responsibility of the cabinet to get parliamentary approval for all its policies and decision in case the parliament the house of you know the if you see the house of commons rejects any policy or bill or budget is sponsored by the cabinet it is taken as a vote of no confidence against the cabinet whenever the parliament in reality the house of commons feels that the cabinet is acted or is acting against the mandate or is ignoring the mandate or public opinion it can pass a vote of no confidence against the cabinet in such an you know in such a case the ministry you know resign the ministers work as a team under the captaincy of pm they swim and sing together they came into office as a team and remain in office as a team and go out of office as a team all are committed to defend and collectively the policies and decisions of the cabinet clear everyone let's move on to another slide now more features now what happened in the british cabinet system the pm occupies a most important position right british parliamentary system has been working virtually as a prime ministerial system of government indeed the p british pm is a pivot around which whole of administration revolve he is the center of all power and hold the strongest office of the government he is a real maker and controller of the government and the king always acts upon his advice clear now secrecy of the office how come they maintain the secrecy of the office the office of the british pm however really rests upon political tradition that is till today no british law defines his power and function the cabinet work in all secrecy privacy of proceedings is a rule whatever goes on in the meeting of the cabinet is kept secret the minister discuss freely all issues and problem which comes before the cabinet they oppose the measures and that they dislike propose amendments and submit alternative proposals all this is kept secret no one outside the cabinet knows as to how decisions were taken and who opposed and who supported which de decisions clear everyone now come on to next now political homogeneity right now what happened political homogeneity normally all the members of the ministry are member of the some party clear the party which gets a majority in the elections of the british house of commons forms a ministry the monarch appoints the leader of the majority party in the commons right and then as a pm and appoint all other ministers upon his advice all the ministers are taken from the members of his majority party in the house of commons in the house of lords clear now next institution of war cabinet normally a cabinet consists of ministers drawn from the members of the political party which has a majority in the house of commons however during national emergency and extraordinary dangerous situation rising out of war a national cabinet consisting of representatives of all the political parties which have a representation in the parliament is constituted it is called the national cabinet at the time of emergency now the right of pm now what happened right of pm another feature of the british cabinet system deserve our attention is right of the pm or the cabinet to advise the king in favor of the dissolution of the house of commons the pm can do so for seeking a fresh mandate or for punishing the commons for not agreeing to some of his policies and decision this right of the pm has greatly strengthened the position of cabinet in the house of commons clear everyone let's move on to another slide now now the example we have did right the parliamentary form of government right we already did about in india as well as the uk what form of government they are following now i'm going to start with the presidential government and presidential government works in usa then let's see how us is implementing its presidential government right the very first thing is what single unified judiciary in the us presidential system the president is both the nominal executive as well as the real executive he is both the head of the state as well as of the government because they, because they enjoy the presidential government all the features of presidential government here again we can repeat right now separation of power between the congress and the president right in the united states the president is independent of the congress the memberships of the executives and legislative are incompatible a member of the congress cannot be simultaneously a member of the executive the executive heads of various de government department are not member of the congress they have no right to participate in the legislative ex ex activities and work of the legislatures clear everyone now fix a stable tenure the us president has a fixed and stable tenure of 4 years he can be removed only by impeachment on grounds of treason bribery or other high crimes and misdemeanor the impeachment proceedings have to be initiated by us house of representatives and the charges have to be investigated by the us senate right which sits as the court of impeachment during the impeachment proceedings the us chief justice presides out order the meeting right of the senate the president stands impeached only if the impeachment resolution gets passed by the senate by a two third majority and this process is very difficult as the way this is difficult in indian presidential system right though we are following the indian parliamentary system but if you go for if you want to remove the president you have to perform the impeachment clear everyone
Now, the impeachment has to be discussed in both the houses of the parliament. Now, next, the cabinet work as an advisory body to the president. Now, U.S. cabinet consists of all the heads of the various departments who are appointed by the president, all the executive powers exercised by the president. The cabinet, which is called the presidential cabinet, perform the function of giving advice to the president. The cabinet carries out the administration of the state in accordance with the policies, decisions, and directions of the president. Clear. Now, next, responsibility of the cabinet ministers. The members of the cabinet are individually responsible to the president. He can remove the ad will without a Signing any reason, the ministers owe no responsibility to the Congress. Next, now political homogeneity is not a rule in the U.S. presidential system. The president has a right to appoint any person as the head of any government department as a minister. He can appoint persons belonging to different political parties or men of eminence in various spheres of activity to high offices. He has a right to choose and appoint his team of ministers and other high officials. Right, the U.S. cabinet is an organization of professional experts selected by the president for running the administration. The ministers selected by the president can be from one or some political party. The U.S. presidential system has a cabinet but no cabinet system of government. It is a system of rule of the president with the help of his cabinet. Right. So I hope so people have understand about the presidential form of government in the USA. Right. So this way we come to the end of the video now. So I hope so people will understand understand by now ki what is the parliamentary system of government and what is the presidential form of government. So do listen to the videos carefully class and you will get you will clear all your doubts. Right. Thank you.